Okay, so we're back here continuing to talk about pumping and fluid mechanics. And in the last video, we talked about cavitation and how we can assess a pump's potential for cavitation, the kind of things that we need to think about here. So in this video, I want to go through an example and show how we can take that information and use it to assess the potential for cavitation for a particular pump. So here we are told that we have a pump. It's pumping six cubic feet per second, 68 degree water. Um, I guess it should say that it's water there. Suction side of the pump has 35 feet of 10 inch cast iron pipe, 10 inch diameter pipe, a strainer that has a minor loss coefficient of two and a half, and it's got a valve of, with a minor loss coefficient of 0.1. Manufacturers provided the NPSH. So in this problem, we're given NPSH. It could have said net positive suction head. It could have said HS prime. It could have said cavitation parameter. In this particular example, those are things that are not a big deal. That should not be a big deal if you're given something else in a problem. Okay, you just have to be able to recognize what you're given. And out in the real world, you could be given any of those things too. So here, we're told NPSH is uh, 15 feet. And so now we're supposed to find the maximum height that can be placed to prevent cavitation. So we know that the higher we place it, the more potential there is for cavitation. And we want to know is <clears throat> how far above the water can we go before we're going to start, before we think we would start to see cavitation. So, uh, and I wanted to make one note here that this little HP is the height of the pump. And I'm going to call it HP max, the maximum height that we could use. So if we put it five feet above, HP max could be 10 feet and we'd be okay. If we put it 15 feet above and HP max was 10 feet, we would not be okay. We would be in cavitation danger. So little HP is the height of the pump. <clears throat> and then big H pump is the energy that is being added by the pump. And they are two different things. So do not get those confused. I've seen students confuse those in the past. So I know there's a lot of H's and anyway. Uh, so, okay. So that's what we're supposed to do. So I wanted to start by maybe drawing a little diagram over here to help think about this. So we've got water here and we've got a pump and it is come and we have a Q of uh, six cubic feet per second coming out of there and we've got a pipe that goes through here to the pump and we said it has a valve with our little X here and this is a KV of 0.1 and then we have our KS is 2.5 for that strainer for the intake, so we don't add another one in because it's an intake. 2.5 is for everything there, okay? Uh, okay, and so we're, this is our Q, and it's, uh, we're told that the diameter here is 10 inches, which is equal to 0.833 feet, and we're told it's cast iron, so our roughness height here for cast iron we go look that up it comes out to be 0. 0.00085 feet and we are going to be working in US units here so we're going to put it in feet and not meters uh, D we have let's see so our our minor loss coefficients here we're going to have the valve and the strainer so our sum of the K's is 0. 0.1 plus 2.5 is equal to 2.6 could be different in a different problem. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, we're told the HS prime or the net positive suction head is equal to 15 feet for this problem. Okay, I think that's all the givens. So we have our E value, we have D, and we have our K, HS prime. We're also going to need the specific weight of water, which is 62.3 pounds per cubic foot here at 68 Fahrenheit. And we're going to need the vapor pressure, which is 0.344 PSI. And the atmospheric pressure, we're not told anything particular, so we're just going to assume it's standard atmospheric conditions, which is generally reasonable unless you know otherwise and when would that be again we mentioned before that if you're at high altitude you wouldn't make that assumption so here in chicago 
probably pretty reasonable to assume your atmospheric pressure. Okay, so I and one more thing we're going to need here is the kinematic viscosity of water. I'm going to eventually need that in uh, at that standard temperature and in U.S. customary units. Okay, and acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so here's our all our information about this problem that we're given: pipe diameter, roughness height minor loss coefficients, specific weight of water, vapor pressure, atmospheric pressure, acceleration to gravity, kinematic viscosity, net positive suction head, and flow rate. And so how are we going to use this problem to analyze our cavitation potential? So what we're going to do here is we're going to, so I'm kind of running low on space, but I'm going to do an energy balance, as I mentioned in the last video here, between this first point and then my second point is going to be the place where I'm worried about cavitation, which is going to be right before the pump. So this is going to be point two, and here is point one. Okay, so our energy balance. I'm going to write. And so before we get to the pump, we don't have to worry about it adding energy. We talked about how you can analyze the pump head and the energy addition last time. That could be part of one of these problems where you do that first. I mean, that's how you'd have to do it in reality. Uh, but here we're told we already did that, and we figured out that the flow rate is, is 6 cubic feet per second. So now we can just focus on the cavitation risk. And so what we need to know is we need to know the pressure right here before you get to the pump. So we got to make sure that we are at, and the key thing here in bold, we're at PV over gamma plus HS prime at point 0.2. Okay, so we need, so I'm going to have to figure out what the pressure is there. Since I've already got the flow rate, it's not as much work uh, as it could be otherwise. So energy balance, we have P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 is equal to P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2 plus any head losses that happen along the way just like we have done many times, many, many times before. So point one here, so a lot of times we would cancel out if we're saying, oh, it's atmospheric pressure. Well, here we are worried about the absolute pressure, so we can't do that. But so P1, this is at atmospheric pressure. So P1 is at P atmosphere over uh, gamma. Uh, V1, we can say is zero. This is a big tank. It's not going to be moving very much, OK? Uh, Z1, so we're trying to figure out so one, more, one more thing to draw here in the diagram. What is HP max? Okay, this is what we need to know. What is HP max? That is the height above the water surface where we can put this and still be and still be safe. And so Z2 minus Z1 is equal to HP max. Okay, so I'm going to move the Z1 over. P2, we said at this key point, we got to make sure that the pressure head, which is P2 over gamma, the pressure head needs to be PV over gamma plus HS prime. So I'll just substitute P2 over gamma is going to be PV over gamma plus HS prime. And then plus HP max. So that's Z2 minus Z1. And then plus... And then, so I'm going to still have a velocity when I get here to the pump. There's velocity that I have to think about. And then I've got my head loss, which is going to be my minor loss coefficients plus the Darcy-Weisbach friction. So I've got one for this V, and then I've got a sum of the Ks, and then I've got a FL over D, all of that times V squared over 2G. And now I have got my terms that I need to uh, analyze this. And so I need to solve this for HP max. So we're given HS prime, we know PV, and we know gamma, P atmosphere, gamma, some of the Ks, F. So we need F, we gotta go get that still. And we need V, G, L, and D. And, uh, that was one more thing we were told here. L is 35 feet. So this was given up here in the problem statement. I didn't write it down. So, uh, but we need F. So to get F, we need to get our, I guess I called it E. We've been calling it epsilon in this 
this textbook we're using calls it epsilon, so I'll change it to epsilon over d 0.0085 over 10 over 12, which is 0.833, and that comes out to be 0.001. <clears throat> and um, V is going to be Q over A, so 6 cubic feet per second divided by pi over 4 divided by 10 over 12 squared to get that in uh, feet squared to get us in feet per second and that should come out to be 11 feet per second and then we can get the Reynolds number dv over nu uh, 10 over 12 times 11 divided by 1.08 times 10 to the minus fifth, and our Reynolds number then comes out to be eight times 10 to the fifth. So I've got, you know, again, I don't have to iterate here. You could have a problem where you did have to iterate and figure out the flow rate first, but this is easier because we're given flow rate. So, um, so we've got Reynolds number, we've got our E over D, and then we can go to the Moody chart, and we're gonna get, <coughs> Moody or SJ equation, we're going to get that F is equal to 0 0.02. I guess it's 020 right on the nose. Um, okay, so all of our given stuff over here, okay, remember. Then we do our energy balance between these points. We have our two minor losses, our friction loss, our elevation change, and we've still got velocity there. So we lose the first velocity, atmospheric pressure, vapor pressure, plus HS prime. And we've still got our one for velocity, and our head loss is some of the Ks, FL over D, and then HP max is gonna be Z2 minus Z1. And so <clears throat> now we've gotten uh, our friction factor, so we have everything, and we can just go back and plug it in here. And so we get HP max is equal to, <clears throat> if I solve for that one, P atmosphere minus PV over gamma, putting those two terms together, and then minus HS prime and minus one plus sum of the Ks plus FL over D, V squared over two G. <clears throat> and this is going to be our kind of cavitation equation, but it's not a new thing and there's no need to try to memorize it. I would say it's foolish to try to memorize this instead of understanding where it comes from because we've done many energy balances. <clears throat> but now I believe we have everything. We got, we just got F, we have L, we have D, we have V, we have G, we have K, HS prime. So we can just plug and chug. So P atmosphere, 14.7, PV, 0.344. And those are both in pounds per square inch. So we do have to get the units right. Did this one in, in the US units because it's harder. So if you have metric, it's a little bit easier, I think. So inches and feet here. So I need 144 square inches per square foot. And that will make all this in units of feet. HS prime we were given was 15 feet. And again, this is something here we're just given. It might be a little bit harder to get it, but it's not something super complicated. So you can't expect it to be exactly identical every time you look at it. So 15 feet for HS prime and then minus a one plus 2.6 for our minor losses. Our friction is 0.020. Our length is 35 over D, which is 10 over 12. Okay, and these are all dimensionless then. And then V squared we said was 11 squared over two times 32.2. And this will also be in units of feet. And so if we plug those numbers in, I got that the maximum height would be 9.8 feet, not very far. So remember the biggest that it could ever really be is um, 
one one atmosphere worth of pressure head which is about a little over 33 feet 34 5 feet so that would be the most it could be here we're saying it can only be 9.8 feet because we had this big net positive suction head we had a big minor loss here 2.5 uh, velocity units for the strainer and then we also had 35 feet of this pipe moving at a pretty high velocity 11 feet per second is fast which means you're going to get more you know a pretty large friction loss here so um, put all those things together and we can only put the pump 9.8 feet above the water surface or we would get cavitation so this question could also be asked in a different way of if I place the pump eight feet above the water surface is cavitation going to happen you would use the same procedure and you would just see whether whether or not your eight feet was above the max or, or not for example so so that's how you can analyze a pump for cavitation